Welcome back to the King's Podcast, The Wellness Dive with Lucky. I'm your hostess, the Lucky. Now, this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Pink October is most like to call it. And today we are joined by Dr. Hassan Ghazal, consultant, oncologist, and hematologist with more than three decades of experience dealing with breast cancer cases. Also, I might add, he is American Triple Board Certified. So when it comes to cancer, Dr. Ghazal is your man. Thank you, doctor, for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thanks for the nice introduction as well. <laughs> My pleasure, doctor. So I'm going to start you off. Tell us one thing that people should know about breast cancer, but most don't know. The one thing, if I have to choose one sentence, let's say, it's about early detection because early detection is the only way we could save lives. There is nothing like finding a cancer early on uh, and the cure rate is over 90, 95% in many cases. Then coming to a physician with a serious illness, more serious illness, uh, God forbid, spread the cancer somewhere else <laughs> where it become incurable. So we have the choice and we have excellent guidelines, international guidelines, local guidelines that we can follow to ensure that we can detect these cancers early because there is no question early detection works. So we keep on telling people to get detected early, screening and all that. How early is early? You never know. So how early, early, it depends on family history, frankly. If you absolutely have no family history, you still have to start at age 40 to do your first mammogram slash ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And even I can add MRI in, case, in some cases. Because young age, they have what we call dense breasts. So mammogram lose some of the sensitivity when you have very dense breasts. And that's where ultrasound and MRI are complementary mm -hmm. and become more critical at young age than the elderly patients. Mm -hmm. So this is for general population. And I say that because more than 80 to 85 percent, not to scare people, 80 to 85 percent of breast cancer patients have no family history. Yeah, uh, that, that was going to be my next question to you. Actually, most people think that uh, for anyone who has breast cancer, they must have it in the family history. But according to the statistics you just mentioned, it's not so. 85 percent is a huge number. Absolutely. What are the risk factors, doctor? So risk factors could vary uh, from genetic, I mean, still genetic, uh, because sometimes we, there are genes that we still don't know that can predispose you to cancer. We know a few, quite a few, mm -hmm. but not all. So it's still genetic and environment. When I say environment, um, exposure to cigarette smoking, for example, alcohol use, all these have been associated with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. We have traditionally early menarche, you know, when a girl start menstruating at age nine, eight, oh. that's a risk factor. Okay. When women over 55 still menstruating, that's a risk factor also. Mm -hmm. When you don't have babies until you are over 30 is a risk factor. And you know, these days, not many people are getting married early <laughs> for True. obvious reasons. True. True. So in the past 15, 16, you know, mm -hmm. even a lot younger, you get married and you get your first child at age 16 maybe. Yeah. True. Now it's rare to see a woman below 30 having a baby, really mm -hmm. rare. Mm -hmm. Especially in urban uh, cities, uh, yeah. the average now age is 35 even. Mm -hmm. So that's a risk factor. Mm -hmm. uh, another risk factor is obesity. Big risk factor because... Many of, especially in our Arab world, we have high obesity starting to go up even in the Gulf region. Oh. Mm -hmm. It is a biggest risk factor beside next to say smoking for any cancer engine for that matter, not just breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It's the second largest risk factor for human cancers is obesity. The reason being there is something called insulin growth factor mm -hmm. and that goes up in obese patients for obvious reason, because you want to get insulin to keep your sugar okay. And that IGF, we call insulin growth factor, is a stimulus for cancer cells as well. Mm -hmm. So with chronic exposure, I'm talking over years, you can end up with cancer. So you take breast cancer, prostate cancer, all the GI cancers, 
-hmm. they are all related to obesity in one way or another. Wow. So it's almost as bad as smoking. You know, it's so funny. All the doctors that I've um, spoken to who've sat on the chair you're sitting on now, obesity is always coming up. Mm -hmm. In every kind of disease, obesity is Absolutely. always coming up. It is a serious issue. Yes. For yeah. liver disease, for GI diseases, uh, cardio, of course, cardiovascular disease, number one killer still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obesity is always a risk factor. Might I add on the risk factors, being a woman is a risk factor. Because Absolutely. men also develop breast cancer. What do the statistics say about men and breast cancer? So the number of men with breast cancer is only 1% or less. So obviously a huge difference here with uh, sex. That's why we always associate breast cancer with women. But not to ignore the pain, there are a few thousands of patients in this world with, with male breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So the risk for male breast cancers are different. Most of them are, contrary to women, most of them are genetically driven. So if you do BRCA analysis, for example, or BRCA-like gene, you are going to find them in a much higher percentage than women. Uh -huh. So that's why we always do genetic testing when we see a man with breast cancer. How many men have you seen that had breast cancer over your career? Quite a few. Yeah. I haven't seen here yet in mm -hmm. UAE, but in the uh, United States, I've probably followed at least 15 to 20 uh, male breast cancer patients over probably 20 years. And how do they come to find out that they have breast cancer? Because I can imagine they cannot do a mammogram. Well, actually, they can. Oh. Yes. It's easier than <laughs> women, actually. Less painful. It's the usual thing. Mm -hmm. Lump. Uh, Just pain, the lump, yeah. Sometimes pain. Mm -hmm. Discomfort. One-sided lump, you know. Because some of we as men can have, you know, like, uh, augmented breast when one side is different than another mm -hmm. or change. So that's why we know, uh, we say always know your body. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say self-exam yourself because you are the most one that can tell there is a difference. So most of the presentation, a lump growing in my breast sometimes associated with pain mm -hmm. because in men it's more painful than women because it's a small area. So when there's anything growing, it's going to cause more pain than a mm -hmm, woman breast. Mm -hmm. where it's and it will be more noticeable. Absolutely. So usually pain is not present in, in females uh, with breast masses uh -huh, uh -huh. versus men. So men will feel more pain mm -hmm. and it's a growing mass. Mm -hmm. So that's how they come to the doctor attention. And yes, there is many time delay mm -hmm. because it's, it's sort of a taboo. You know, men are sort of sensitive that, oh, I, I cannot have breast cancer or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's always a sensitive subject, um, but it can happen. So breast cancer affects one in eight women. Mm -hmm. Would you consider it as one of the worst cancers? So depend what you mean by worse, because as far as when we say worse cancer, are we talking just about statistics or are we talking killer? Because if we think of the death, it the is, death not, rate. It is mm -hmm. not a worse killer, no. Mm -hmm. Number one is lung cancer by far. Mm -hmm. Lung cancer alone kills more people than breast, and you can combine with breast colorectal and uh, prostate combined. Mm -hmm. So the number of people dying every year from lung cancer is, is absolutely still staggering. Mm -hmm. So if you think of statistically worse, yes, it is the most common cancer in women, absolutely. Uh, and the number of cases have surpassed lung cancer recently. Because before, lung cancer used to be more common mm -hmm. in men and women, if you combine the two. But because the smoking has dropped tremendously across the world, mm -hmm. there's actually a drop, finally, in lung cancer cases. If you look at historically, since World War II, mm -hmm. that's when the smoking uh, spike happened. And that's when lung cancer, 10 years later, spiked. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the most common until the 1950s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And it stayed up there, really. This is the first time, the first decade, we see a drop in lung cancer cases. And for, for the first time, breast cancer became the most more common now in terms mm -hmm. of the numbers. Mm -hmm. But it is not the first killer. So if you're worse in terms of statistics, I would say yes. Not in terms of killing how many p people are dying from, from it. Is it the same case as, uh, let's say, uh, if you compare the statistics now and uh, about 20 years ago? Absolutely how far, not. A how far very good question. Mm -hmm. We have data every few years or every decade on the mortality from cancer, including breast cancer. And the good news in the last two decades, 
there is actually a, at least 15% drop in mortality. Mm -hmm. So almost 5 to 7% every decade. And the reason for that is multifactorial. Number one, early detection. So it's definite stage migration. Mm -hmm. We're seeing more stage one and two than three and four because of all the probably education and the campaigning. And more people are accepting mammogram even here in the Gulf where it used to be more of a taboo. Mm -hmm. Women cannot go uh, show her breast or do any test uh, or they are scared or afraid or whatever, shy. It used to be like that. It's not anymore. I think the word is spreading. Mm -hmm. More people are doing mammogram as, as expected uh, mm -hmm. from the number of population here. So this is one factor, however. The second factor is new drugs. We have at least at least 30 to 40 new drugs in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if not more. Mm -hmm. Every month almost we have a new drug now. More effective than the previous one. Absolutely, mm -hmm. more effective. And not chemotherapy. We used to always think of traditional chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Most of these new drugs, none of them are new chemo. Very few are new chemo. Mm -hmm. So they're all either target therapy, mm -hmm. gene therapy, genetic directed therapy, what mm -hmm. we call like a target laser bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing about this therapy, it is more directed to cancer cells, usually have less side effect than the traditional chemotherapy mm -hmm. and more effective. So when I say more effective, not a woman who has stage four, of course, who are pro prolonging her life. Mm -hmm. But when we give chemo to prevent the cancer from recurring, mm -hmm. we are doing great. We have 50 to 70, 80 percent reduction in the risk of recurrence mm -hmm. by giving what we call adjuvant therapy. Mm -hmm. And that certainly have made big impact on the mortality of these patients. Mm -hmm. More than that, even the stage four patients, the median survival has quadrupled in the last 25 years. So a woman who used to say, okay, the median survival at three years, even with stage four, now it's up to six years. Mm -hmm. So the latest study just published recently, the median survival was near 70 months. Mm -hmm. So imagine that. So wow. many of them wow. can wow. die of wow. something else. Yeah. That's what we call, we're changing the disease to chronic disease like hypertension <laughs> or diabetes. You can't get cured, yeah, but sure. you, you, you ultimately die of something, right? Mm -hmm. So if I tell you your median survival, even with advanced breast cancer, is going to mm -hmm. be six years, seven years. Mm -hmm. That's great news. And we think we're even going to do better with all the new researches going on, new drugs discovery. So the days and years when somebody would be told they have cancer and the first thing that comes to mind is it's a death sentence. Those days are gone. Absolutely. They're way behind us. Absolutely. If you take all breast cancer comers, all stages, mm -hmm. still our cure rate is over 80%. Wow, so that's brilliant. Very high cure rate. What is the most important fact that you'd want people to know about breast cancer? I mean, uh, we do have a breast cancer awareness month. Most, uh, I wouldn't say most, but I know people who wait for this month so that they can avail offers and free mammograms. Uh, this means they are waiting for 11 months just to do this. Is that advisable, really? Shouldn't we be getting the mammograms throughout the year? Screening, testing, you know, you don't have to wait for 11 months for this one month. So, okay, the answer to that, of course, you have to think of, when you think about the population, you always have to think about financial issues. Yes, of course. And we always say cost effectiveness, mm -hmm. you know, what's the value base for your study, any study you do. So for mammogram and ultrasound, let's say, or MRI, unless, unless the radiologists say this thing, I'm not sure what it is, what's going to do, then I recommend follow up in four to six months. Mm -hmm. If you don't see that mentioned and it's totally a clear mammogram, there is no indication really to do, even in Europe, they are saying two years now even, oh, if you okay. have a totally mm -hmm. clean mammogram mm -hmm. because, of, because they have to cover all that in Europe. So they said two years. But in the US and in here, it's recommended annually. So annually is the minimum acceptable where you have a balance between, it's not as expensive, you know, a regular mammogram as an MRI. That's why arguably, if we say MRI is the best screening test, but it's very expensive. You can't yes, say yes. to everybody, go do MRIs. Mm -hmm. So that's why we go with a mammogram or an ultrasound. They're still cheaper than an MRI. Mm -hmm. So unless you are following a specific spot, 
that showed on a mammogram or ultrasound, there's absolutely no need to repeat except annually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, with few exceptions, sometimes you have an aggressive tumor that, yeah, it may show from one year to the next, but you can't say we need a mammogram every six months on everybody. Mm -hmm. So there are case-by-case -case situation then. But annually is the minimum. Many countries say every two years. Many countries don't start till age 50. There's always debate between age 40 and, four and 50. Mm -hmm. But my argument is, we didn't say that, but half the women in this country with breast cancer are below age 50. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I say the mammogram above age 50, what about the half the cases that are of below 50? Of course. So of I course. think that settled the, the problem, but it's always more financial mm -hmm. really than anything else. There is no question in my mind. Age 40 is a good starting point for high-risk patient. If they have BRCA in the family, BRCA mutation, or stronger family history, then we say age 30, get a baseline ultrasound or mammogram and self-exam. All right, doctor. Thank you. And I promise this would be the last one. Okay. I know you have a very busy clinic, but I have one That's last fine. one. Um, you've been a cancer specialist mm -hmm. for more than three decades. How many breast cancer cases have you come across? Uncountable. <laughs> Uncountable. In the few of them stick in your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's one that really stuck in my mind because how she presented and how she's cured. I mean, God, the, the, God can do anything. Okay, so this lady came to the emergency room because blood was pouring out literally from her chest wall there was no breast left oh and she had this huge dressing that she used to manage and tell her family i have infection i have infection mm -hmm. the only th 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 reason she came to the er because she couldn't control the bleeding anymore mm -hmm. this was, was back in the u.s pouring out blood yes mm -hmm. and we got her through chemotherapy radiation therapy and hormonal therapy and this is 15 years ago, and she's totally cancer-free. After today. Correct. And after she thought this is her death sentence, then she, said she knew something is bad going on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this shyness or you don't want to announce, uh, and this is not just here. Uh, this is an American lady. So it's everywhere you go. This mm -hmm. was a rural community, but more close to our mm -hmm. beliefs. Wow. So one last message. Get out of shyness. This is a real problem for women especially. Don't delay. Don't say this is nothing. I think what happened, women ignore, ignore. So as, as it get bigger, as it get ulcerated, mm -hmm. you look and say, oh my God, what is this? But for the patient living day by day, it become like this is my normal, you know. Wow. So don't be shy. Get Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you had Dr. Gazal. Get tested. Do the right thing. Mammograms save lives. Until next time, goodbye.